Hi, if you're looking for a better understanding of negative painting, then you've come to the right video. I'm Lorraine Rimmelin from Watercolor Artisan, and I'm going to show you ways that we can use negative painting to create layers. And today I'll be working on trees. I am going to be using four colors. I did a color swatch. In fact, I did two of them before this video. And I ended up really liking uh, this one. I felt it was, for my feelings for today, much more exciting than this. Today's a really gloomy winter day, so maybe these colors are not making me feel joy. This is exciting me. So these are going to be the colors. That's the reason I do a color swatch. Um, because I want to see what the colors are going to look like in my painting, how they're going to mingle together. And also, every time we sit down to paint, we feel different about our, our art. And um, this brought me more joy. Now I'm going to be putting down a wash. This will be the color of the first layer of my trees. The most important thing about this wash, most important, is the value that I must be uh, using an extremely light value. If I start at this point making it dark, um, I'm not going to be able to do the layering that I really want to do. So in order to keep it very light in value, I'm using mostly water with a little bit of pigment. As much color as I'm going to put on here, you're going to look back at this and think I worked on white paper. That's how light this first layer is going to look when we start to do the um, actual layers of trees. Now that my paper is dry, you can see how light in value it is. That's perfect, exactly what I want. There is no wrongs at this point. This doesn't matter, this doesn't matter, none of this matters. Because remember, we're going to be painting over this again and again as we layer. Now, normally when I paint, I do not leave a heavy pencil mark if I'm using a pencil. Um, but for purposes of demonstration, I am going to put down heavy uh, pencil marks. So now I'm going to start drawing in my land and my tree shapes. And I'm going to keep these as simple as possible. It's not about the shape of the trees right now. It's really about just getting them in. You know, so just be creative and don't fuss too much. Make sure you leave some space in between because we want to be able to put trees behind these, but don't make it as perfectly uniform. One, two, three, like a little army of trees. Give yourself a little room between trees and make your trees any shapes you want. You can keep them extremely simple or you can get more involved. That's entirely up to you. And we'll do one tree here that's really just going to be tall. Okay, now that's way too dark pencil marks for me, but it's what I need for the demonstration. Now I'm going to negative paint around the trees, and that's really, really simple. I'm going to choose my colors, keep my value light. Anything I paint over this will become darker but I'm still going to use a very light value and I'm going to paint everything but my trees. Every single thing but the trees. Okay, any colors I want, my choice, your choice, you have fun when you do yours. Um, an easy, simple follow along for you to do. Um, a lot of times I work upside down for this because I like the way I can get my point right in here.
I need to dry this before I can put another layer in. Now that my paper is dry, I'm going to continue the next layer by penciling in the trees. Now, what's important in penciling in these trees is that at this point now, in our first layer, our trees never overlapped. Now, as we start to build the layers, our trees are starting to overlap. So I'm going to, and I started a little further back to give it a little feeling of depth. So I'm going to put in a little tree here that's going to, its branch is going to run across this way. Now please don't get hung up on the shape of your trees. Just do the simplest shapes you can because it, it's easier to follow at this stage of the uh, painting, the learning process. Okay, now I penciled in my trees and I'm going back to the same exact process I used before. Again, I'm going to turn my paper upside down. I like that I can get the point of my brush into all these little spaces. Just easier for me. Please do whatever is more comfortable for you. And let's get started. I can go with a tiny bit of a darker value now. Each time I layer, I'm not working on white and I'm building up um, the depth by pushing back the background with a value change. Let's start the next layer of trees. I will pencil some in for you so you can see, but otherwise I'm gonna do some freehand just to move a little bit faster. So in these bigger shapes or bigger spaces, I can pencil in a tree for you. So let's come up here with a tree and we'll make it thin so I still have room around it. It continues up, but it also branches off this way and comes through. And here I can do, um, another thing I want to do is move it back a little bit. So I want to have an edge, my line here. Now since I'm using this pencil, which is a watercolor pencil, when I want to remove the bottom of this pencil line, I don't use an eraser, I just use a little water. And that lifts it right up for me. So I can move that back. These are water soluble uh, pencils. Let's do um, another tree right through here. And let's let it come up and cross over this way. I'm keeping it thin. I want to I want to get some things behind here. But other than penciling a few of those, I'm going to just uh, paint this without the pencil line so you can see how I would normally paint this.
I penciled in some of the shapes for my last layer of trees. Um, in between, if you can see some of these marks, they're going to be a little bit shorter. They're not going to come as high as these because remember, the trees that are closest to me will appear the biggest. Uh, I'm going to darken my color now. This is my last layer. Then we'll address a little bit of the bottom and a little bit of the top. But basically, I really wanted you to focus on the actual layering in negative painting. Okay. I am done um, with the depth of the forest. I'm going to deepen a few spots that I see. I'm going to come back in. I, I want to see this a little bit more pushed back. Now I'm going to just use a little water to soften that edge. I can co go in and reinforce any of the shapes I want. Um, that's what I mean when I said, when you get to the end and you get into your darks, you really have the opportunity now to play around with some of the original shapes. But remember my original wash where I said there was some white spots and some, look at how this white spot looks like a little sunshine hitting this tree. Up here, I'm going to create a little bit of an edge so that this becomes tops of the trees. And now I'm going to come in across here. And as I know this is very crowded in here now, but if I really had to see a little bit of sky poking through, 
I'm just going to pick up a little bit of my glue. And again, it's really crowded. I don't know if I would really see sky, but if I choose and I want to cut that, I'm going to soften that edge so it's not all so hard. This is simple. It's as simple as doing it with one color. Um, I want you to have fun with it. Enjoy. Thank you um, so much for watching. And I hope you will follow me, subscribe, and please like below. And once again, I always love hearing from you and your comments. It helps me uh, be a better artist and it helps me know what you're looking for that I could possibly offer you. Have a great day, happy painting, and I will see you soon.